Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Formula One scene in just a moment. So you've written a new book, The Winning Formula, uh, which is all about sort of leadership and, and finding that winning formula. And, there's a, and as Susanna was, was touching on, there's a number of uh, footballers that haven't made mm -hmm. it into the World Cup squad. There's a number of managers mm -hmm. uh, that perhaps surprisingly found themselves without jobs this morning. What's your advice and what have you learned over the years in terms of sort of turning those defeats into victories? Well, when I started out in my journey to, to want to compete on the, you know, the highest level in motor racing, I didn't realise really the business of sport and the learnings that we can take from that into everyday life. So um, what's really captured in here is, uh, you know, how the pursuit of marginal gains, mm. uh, the importance, of course, of the work ethic, teamwork, Just how coming together. Just explain marginal gains, because that's a sort of common phrase in sports achievement at the moment. But for the rest of us, that's a slightly confusing Well, I think that a lot, yeah, a lot of people are looking for those sort of eureka moments, aren't they? The big idea. But in actual fact, in, in being the best version of yourself, it could be in fitness, you know, finding that half a percent improvement. Uh, in, in the case of being a racing driver, you need to be as light as possible because, you know, power to weight is very important. So, oh. you know, reducing your overall weight by half a percent can have a huge in, improvement in, in your performance out on track. How do you do that while staying healthy? Uh, well, you, you, you have to be very focused and dedicated. Sometimes it can be quite extreme. And in my younger career, uh, it was to the point where I actually had bulimia to, to be able to maintain my weight. Now, that's obviously not something that I would recommend to anyone. Um, how, did in, you get that, how did you get that in check? And how does something like that develop, though, David? Uh, because if you look at a jockey, then they have to be weighed with their saddle. A racing driver gets weighed with his helmet and his suit. I'm quite tall for a racing driver. Yeah. You can't tell I'm sitting down here, but you know most of them are quite small. So I had a weight disadvantage. So you want to make weight, and you you. How want old to were you when that was happening? Oh, this is when I was a teenager in, okay. in karting. But did anybody um, know? Did your parents? No, they didn't. No um, but I knew, and I wanted to be competitive, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be focused, and um, you know that's a very extreme version mm -hmm. of of trying to achieve your goals. But, you know, if we take it to a less extreme uh, point of view and during my Grand Prix career, it's, it's about making sure that you're, you're getting the best out of yourself, the people around you. I think that there can be a, a, a naturally fairly selfish attitude to how people live their lives. But the power of the team mm. can be incredibly important to achieving success. And that doesn't have to be in a football team or a Formula One team. It can be in your, your own family. It can mm. be in your own uh, business. Um, where are we at at the moment with women drivers? and women being able to compete at the same level in the same numbers as men in Formula One? Well, I think that's a key thing. There isn't the numbers. They're, they're not being encouraged at grass uh, uh, roots level. And therefore, we just don't have the numbers of women coming through. Now, my younger sister was naturally more talented than I was. And she raced in carts and she was winning in karting. But in the end, she didn't have that last little desire and hunger to want to push herself um, to, to continue. And does she believe that it was down to her or is there a you know, structural problem in Formula One that, that puts women off? Is it simply about the women? No, actually, in other sports, you're not allowed. You're not able to yeah. compete on, on an equal footing with men. But in motorsport, it's always been open to both mm. men and women. And one of my col colleagues on television, Susie Wolf, was able to get herself mm. to the point where she was on the cusp of Formula One. The opportunity didn't come and she chose to step away. Yeah. But I, I don't see any physical reason because we have power steering and the likes mm. in the cars. Um, and I, and it's actually, not about risk, is it? Well, Potentially, you know, I haven't, you know, studied this, uh, the different psychology of men and women, but from a physical point of view, an average man will be 30% stronger than an average woman. Mm. But Does she regret it? Does she regret walking away, especially if she saw the success you had and actually she was better than you? Uh, well, I, no, she's no longer with us, so I'm, I'm not able to, to ask her that question. But, uh, but at the time, uh, when, you were, when your career was forging ahead and she mm. changed direction and she, she stopped racing, did yeah. she ever say, I should have carried on doing this? Uh, I don't recall her ever saying that. I think she you was know. quite proud that yeah. one of the family had, had made their way through. But that actually gives me the belief there's no reason why men and women can't compete mm. together on equal footing in Formula One, but we just need the numbers at karting and, and supporting them through uh, school. Um, who's the greatest at the moment? I think Hamilton is the greatest right now, you know, not just to be, uh, you know, the, put the British hat on, but the, the guy when he's on form is exceptional. And anyone who watched the Spanish Grand Prix, that was a demolition of the opposition. It's lovely to see you. Thank you so much. Um, just a quick final word on grid girls. Uh, a, a great glamorous part of Formula One tradition or outdated and, uh, and good riddance? Well, look, I take the view that it should really be down to, to the, the women that were doing that role to decide.